Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Sean New Show. Friends, great to be with you today. We have an amazing show, friends. On this episode, we're going to be talking about Chris D'Elia. That's right. Diddler D'Elia. Big article in the Rolling Stone. More allegations of him being a, you know, creepy, sociopathic freak. If you if you couldn't tell by looking at can you believe it, guys? This guy's a narcissistic, sociopathic freak that abuses women sexually, allegedly. Can you believe it? I mean, I don't know, women. You, you can't tell by looking at him, huh? So, friends, I'm going to read this article. It's a very long article, I'll tell you. And a lot of the Sean News friends, we don't really like Chris D'Elia. We think he's a grifter. We think he's creepy. We think he's weird. He's, I'm not going to say he's hack. I mean, he can be funny. My biggest problem with Chris D'Elia is he does that stupid grifting hour. Some people were saying we should call him Griff D'Elia. I think that's a great idea. But he needs the money because he's going, you know, he's he's falling on hard times. A lot of these allegations aren't looking so good. But I'm going to tell you, friends, I read the story. I looked into the evidence. And remember, over here at Sean News, we call balls and strikes. And I think that my opinion about this whole Chris D'Elia situation may surprise you. Yes, I think he's a complete weirdo freak. In fact, I, I said before that one of my ex-girlfriends, I think a while back, made a joke about her hooking up with him. She has since recanted that story. Um, I wonder why. And says, I don't know what you're talking about, Sean. I never said anything like that. I just said we're friends. I said, oh, no, I think I remember pretty good that you were kind of bragging, trying to make me feel bad. It didn't make me feel bad, of course. Sean News has never <laughs> felt bad about anything a woman has tried to do to him. Sean News is the player. The player does not get played. It's always been that way. It will always be that way. I hate to say it. Me and Chris D'Elia might have that part in common. But we're going to look at the evidence, friends, and I'm going to give you my opinion on Chris Diddler D'Elia and this entire Rolling Stone story. And has he turned over a new leaf or is he just a sociopath? And that's just the way he is. Love him or hate him. I think there are some interesting questions about why is the rest of the comedy you know, community okay with this? Why hasn't Whitney Cummings came out? Why hasn't Brian Callen came out? Where's Joe Rogan? Well, where's Tom? So where are all these people? Why haven't Brendan Schaub? Why haven't they come out and said, you know what? We don't believe these women. Or, you know, we got Chris D'Elia's back. Why are they pretending like nothing happened? See, that's, that's unforgivable over here at Sean News. I think you got to come out. You got to give your opinion, even if you're too lazy to read the entire story. So, friends, we're going to dig into that. I think you're going to love the entire show. It's going to be boring, but it's going to be fun. You're going to love it. Let's go. I mean, let's go. I didn't click it. Fire that person right now. When I when you do that, when I crescendo into that, you got to push it. Get out of my studio. Take, take his passport. Make his life really hard. Yeah, take it. <laughs> we'll have a good time with that. You're not going to get back to Mexico with that passport anymore. We're taking it from you. I'm sorry, friends. This guy's crying over here. And I told him, I said, well, if you would have pushed the button faster, we wouldn't be crying right now. Yeah. Feel pretty dumb now, don't you? Nope, don't cut until I tell you to. We're going to make you pay for this. Take his passport. Yeah, that's a baby. <laughs> You'll never have a good time now, friends. Have a nice day. So we'll see you around, buddy. We're going to get right into it, friends. I'm so sorry, friends. We're There's people back here. We got interns. Most of them are, are worth nothing. I, I really do worry about this next generation, friends. They have no skills. They have no talent. And they don't know how to take it and fire it on a whim gracefully. It's kind of sad, actually. But let's get right on into it, friends. Breaking news, May 16th. This is, what, two days ago. Rolling Stone has an article. Headline says, do everything I say. Ten women claim comedian Chris D'Elia preyed on them. Ten women tell Rolling Stone the 42-year-old comedian and podcaster Griffler, excuse me, Grifter, wow, left them traumatized. The FBI is looking into it. D'Elia denies the allegations, of course. He does. Delia, this guy would never do anything wrong, right, guys? I mean, he's a happily married man with children. Does he look like he would ever do anything wrong? Oh, I don't think so. These women must be mistaken. They must have him mixed up with somebody else. <laughs> so there's this Jasmine Wolf character. She's the main, you know, witness, the star witness here. You know, Delia's saying, I want you to take pictures. This was the deal with Chris Delia. He wanted them to, he basically indoctrinated them into his creepy cult. That was his thing. He got off on that. He made her record a video that says, it doesn't matter if I'm feeling sad or if I'm feeling pouty. 
should have been about you and i'm so sorry this is these are these your these are your comedians friends these are your comedians these are the people on the grifting hour that are asking you for six dollars a month this is the kind of character Fire the intern that brought that, that has a dog. Anybody with a dog is fired. Anybody with a dog is fired. I'm so sorry, friends. We are, <laughs> this show is about as good as Chris D'Elia's, um reputation with women so far. Um, now let's look at how they met. These lovebirds met. They met in March of 2020. She was respond. Now she responded to one of D'Elia's Instagram stories during the early days of the pandemic. She saw him on the show, Whitney. So Whitney Cummings, this is on you as well. She was cooped up at home in, in Canada and recently separated from her husband, who, was, who she was still living with. <laughs> so she's living with her husband, and she's sending messages to Diddler D'Elia. Okay, okay. All right, well, I'm glad she's taking personal responsibility. Uh, Wolf describes needing a distraction. What about your child, I'm just saying? What about your young daughter? Is she not a distraction enough, Miss Wolf? Is that not enough a distraction? So Wolf describes needing a distraction and a one-off message to an attractive comedian seem harmless. Now, I already have a problem with that, an attractive comedian. Really, women? Really? I mean, he's got a good body right here. I'll admit that. He's got a good body, decent physique. He's tall. But man, look at that face. You want to see that face saying, suck my dick. You're going to like it. Come on. Give me, a, give me everything. He's got a hot wife. I'll give him that. I'll tell you, this woman has no discernment whatsoever. What I realized, like you see this picture and you're like, yeah, that's the guy I want to bring home to mom and dad. <laughs> Jeez. Look at this face. Women, I'm sorry. If, if <laughs> this is going to sound really bad. If you're claiming... To be an innocent partner in this, and you saw this face, and you thought you were just going to fire off an innocent little text message to an attractive comedian, and you're surprised that he abuses you and asks you to do unspeakable things and treats you like some cold, that's on you. I'm sorry. That's on you. Take some personal responsibility. Look at his face. Physiognomy. Look at his face. If I ever have a daughter, I'm going to say, learn to look at people's faces and make decisions, baby. Look at his face. I don't have to know anything about him, friends. I don't have to know anything. About, look at the eyebrow. You don't have to know much about Crystalia to know he's a sociopathic narcissist. Now, I'm not saying he's an all bad guy. If I met him, I'd probably we'd probably be friends. We'd probably have a good laugh about all the dumb ladies he's texting. I'm not kidding. This is a guy that clearly doesn't respect women. And, and why should he? Honestly, friends, why should he? Why should he? These women are with their husbands. They should be watching their daughter. And instead, they're sending a message to an attractive comedian. Okay, well, I'm sure your daughter's loving this. So within minutes, Delia responded because he's got nothing going on. He's with his wife. He doesn't care about his wife. These women don't care that he has a wife. So that's also a red flag. Funny how these women, how funny how these women take no personal response. Yeah, I was texting out who obviously had a wife and I ignored all those things because, you know, it's not my fault. I'm just a woman. Um, you know, Wolf says, uh, let me see, blah, but friends, this article is so long. I'm just, we're just going to get through as much as we can. I'm going to try to get my opinion out here. She goes, I really needed something positive, if positive in my life. And it seemed like this was it. Wolf, Wolf explains. Let's see. how we get this out. I had somebody who seemingly could relate so much to what I was going through in my life. Again, look at that face. Does that look like something positive that's coming into your life? Does that look like someone you can trust? Does that look like someone who's going to be honest with you? No, it looks like someone who will say whatever the hell he has to say to manipulate you into getting what he wants. And you fell for it. You fell for it. Let's be honest. I'm not just going to dump on Chris D'Elia and say, oh, he's a bad guy. No, look, it takes two to tango. She messaged him and she was of age. Some of the other ones maybe weren't. Just saying. Um, you know, blah, 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 Other reports came out. Um, but so, so the, here's the funny thing. So, so the, this Los Angeles Times report, all these reports came out and then all, everyone else scrams. Everyone else says, all right, he's a, he's a creep. I'm getting away from him. But Wolf's story diverges from theirs in that she stayed in contact with Dalia. See, she's a real quality 
going on to have what she describes as an emotionally abusive, manipulative, and controlling relationship with the comic until last year. Jeez. Jeez. Jasmine Wolf. I mean, what could have made you think that he'd have no respect for you when all the other ladies left and you stuck around and said, Master, I'll still do whatever you want. What do you want me to do? I'll, de I'll degrade myself any way you want. Uh, what I'm curious about, and some of our sources and interns want to know, was he interested in her little daughter? Was she, how young was she? Is Diddler into that? We're going we're gonna to uncover some things, friends. I'm telling you, this Chris Leah guy is a sicko, but this Jasmine Wolf needs to take more, more responsibility. She's, she's not as much of a victim as she's playing. Sometimes you can be a willing participant in your own victimhood. All right? I'll just say it. You know, if we're going to believe that men and women are equal, then we got to say, hey, some of these women... If you pick the guy, you pick the guy. It's not like Crystal Lee was creeping on you. You pick the guy. If you couldn't look at his physiognomy and see that there was a problem, that's on you. That's on you. I see it. I mean, he looks like a creeper. Now, here's the thing. A lot of hot chicks like creepers. That, that's just the truth. A lot of hot chicks like creepy guys. Now, they're not, they're not hot chicks that you'd ever want to marry. They're not hot chicks that are quality. They're all messed up in the head. But they like creepy looking guys. Uh, they really do, friends. If you're having a hard time getting a chick, turn yourself into a creep. Now, that's not Crystal Lee on the far end. That guy actually is a good looking guy. This is a creeper. This is a sociopath. Look at that face. That's not a guy who's going to tell you the truth and is going to share. He's going to tell you anything he has to say to get you to do what he wants. And shame on you. Look at this. Shame on him for wearing that shirt. So I'm going to show you what Jasmine Wolf looks like in a second, but I'm going to go down this a little. Oh, wow, ads, great. No, we don't want your stupid crap. We love <laughs> that somehow gun violence. No, we're pro-gun violence. Uh, Delia's attorney tried to offer 100 grand to cut off communications with media publications. She entertained it. I would have taken the money, honestly, Wolf. You're not going to benefit from this. So let me show you what this Jasmine Wolf chick looks like. Jasmine Wolf on all streaming platforms. She has two kids now, or is that just one kid? Under, only 14. Wow, only 1,500 followers? Really? That's actually kind of sad and pathetic. Wow. This is her. Let's see. What do you think of this? We're getting super chats that are saying that looks like a dude. I agree. I don't not not to hate. We're not victim blaming or shaming, but you know, you kind of look like a dude a little bit, to be honest. I I, I mean, honestly, not doesn't look. She looks pretty good right here, friends. Oh, great! Stupid Instagram. Let me lie. I hate Instagram so much. Delia, Delia, that not bad, Chris Delia. All those tattoos. Now, friends, let me tell you something about all these tattoos. And I'm sorry if this offends some of you. These are all red flags, okay? So we're not dealing with somebody who's got it all together. Those are all red flags. She's a damaged woman. I hate to say it. She's a damaged woman. That's why she's hitting up Chris D'Elia while she's still married and while she has a kid running around the house. She's damaged. That's why she runs to people like Chris D'Elia. That's why she gets bizarre tattoos like this. That's why she's trying to be a singer or whatever. You know, that, that's not a good profile. And again, we're not shaming her looks. We're just saying Chris D'Elia preys on a certain type of woman that is damaged, a, a certain type of woman that has daddy issues, a certain type of woman that wants to be bossed. Gosh, I hate Instagram, friends. I'm going to have to open up another browser for that. So we're going to go on through this. Um, so she stays in contact with him. And, you know, they're on Snapchat, and he wants her to do a bunch of stuff. I think this is interesting. Several of the women allege Dalia took advantage of the godlike status he had with his fans. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Again, if you think God looks like this, I don't know. How sorry do I feel for you? Were you really? One fan alleges she was 28 when Dalia pressured her into giving him oral sex before one of his shows. You're 28, okay? You're 28, and you have this face and this hack saying, suck my dick, I'll give you a ticket to my copy, crappy show, and you call that forced? Come on now. Let, we got to be fair to Chris D'Elia. These women, I mean, 
Seriously, what what is that? Take some personal responsibility. Jeez. Say your eyes were messed up. Something. There's this other one, Emma. You know, he was trying to get him into a, you know, uh, let's see. It went far beyond a kink's consensual kink relationship. Imagine having a kink relationship with a guy. Jeez. Um, ground rules were never established. Oh, really? So Delia never had you fill out an NDA or anything. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Seems like a really normal relationship. I don't know how you got tricked. Wolf described the controlling dynamic as cult-like and both say they wouldn't have agreed to a relationship if they had known what Delia would be requiring of them. Well, that's typically how sociopaths work. You're not usually going to get the truth. Usually you just look at their faces and you're supposed to just figure that out. You're supposed to look at that face and figure it out. You're not supposed to go, oh, he looks nice. Oh, the stand-up comedian who's been accused by all these women of grooming and all that. Well, I'm sure he's just misunderstood. <laughs> Again, we're not laughing at this. I guess well, I, I am laughing at it. I guess I am laughing at it. Delia's coming out and saying, no, it was all legal. It was all consensual. Honestly, he's not wrong, unless, except for the young ones. Um, I think the weird thing with, with Chris Delia is he wanted them to get anorexic. We're going to search anorexic. Or skinny. I don't know. He, he was wanting them to be really skinny. Let me see. Weight. Oh, yeah. Asking her about her weight and asking, requesting for her to st step on a scale for him. He wants them to be very, very skinny, which makes me think he does like that barely legal look. I really believe that. Um, He had a 13. He called his... He called them babies. He used to, in his cult, he'd say they're elders. I mean, he really wanted to f make a cult, and these stupid women played along with it. I'm sorry, friends. I'm not just going to call them all victims, okay? The underage ones, sure. And, and those are totally different cases. I'm talking about the, the, the legal ones that were playing along and blowing him for a ticket to his stupid show. I'm sorry. That's not on him. I don't know what. I Honestly, we're calling balls and strikes. That's not a strike on Chris D'Elia. Is Does that make, me, make him a horrible person? Of course. Is he sexually immoral? Of course. But I didn't have to read the story. I could just look at the guy and tell that. Come on. Look at this freak. By the way, Jasmine Wolf has an OnlyFans where you can check out all her tattoos. And why not? Yeah, why not? I mean, honestly, you're blowing Chris D'Elia for tickets to a show. Might as well make an OnlyFans, right? We're not going to look look down on you. Um, Let's see. You know, he, he, I mean, look, there was no doubt he was grooming younger women and was talking to them when they were younger. I, I There's no doubt about that. Now, I don't think, I just think he really likes that barely legal look. That's why he wants him to be really skinny. He wants him a little bit on the anorexic side. He doesn't like the curves. He likes the ugly tattoos. He wants daddy issues. He wants women that are messed up in the head. He's also very insecure, which I thought was quite funny. Um, let's see what else here. Hold on. I had a couple notes here. Um, he was controlling, allegedly tracking their locations, friends. <laughs> Right here. Wolf, Emma, and two others claim that Delia was controlling, allegedly tracking their locations, picking out outfits, giving curfews, and pushing some of the women to get a tattoo of his initials. Honestly, he was just doing... These are called shit tests. He's just doing stuff to see if you'll do it. You're dealing with a sociopath. He's incapable of feeling empathy. You, these are what these women don't understand. And honestly, it's on them. I mean, it's, it's on his face. Does that look like a guy who feels empathy? No, he's a con artist. We've documented this. This is how he rolls. He was going to say anything. I want you to poop in your mouth and eat it and say Chris Lilly is the best comedian. I'm not going to do that. All right, we'll just, just do this instead. He's playing with you. Meanwhile, he's married to another chick, and these girls don't see it as a red flag. Oh, no, I want to hang out with the godlike, attractive comedian. Oh, man. Oh, uh, this is pretty funny. He wanted the women on their phones all the time. This is pretty good. Uh, he wanted to send sex sexually explicit photos, which, of course, they complied to immediately. Yeah. <laughs>
These are the women we want. We need to feel sorry for the women that were sending pictures back naked and doing all these things instantly. Oh, I got a, a handsome, attractive comedian. Let me reply as soon as possible. To comply, the women claimed they had to be glued to their phones, rushing to public restrooms, and even pulling over on the side of the road to fulfill his request. A frequent instruction, Wolf claims, was to get on her knees and say she was nothing. <laughs> I'm laughing, friends, because if you see this face and you expect a good, honest, you expect Jesus, there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. If these women were blind, I'd give them some grace. They're not blind. I think this is pretty funny right here, friends. Hold on. Um, I think this is pretty funny. Launched in 2017... The hour long, so they talk about this congratulations podcast launched in 2017. The hour long podcast became beloved for Delia's rants about his life and pop culture and quickly developed an intensely devoted following. Something that Delia, Delia heavily played heavily into with join our cult merchandise. Those are called red flags, women. Those are called <laughs> run away, run away. <laughs> Join our cult. Oh, he seems like a good guy. What about the face? Oh, no, he seems like a good guy. This guy would never lie to me. He's not a con artist. He's not just trying to get in my pants. He's not a sick, disgusting freak. No, no. That's a good, wholesome man right there. Poor women, man. Look at, I mean, these women, they really had, I mean, how could they not know that this guy turned out to be a sociopathic weirdo? Well, he had join our cult merchandise. That did, that wasn't enough. He was their fearful leader or daddy. His followers were his babies. Friends, his babies. That's right. You know what I would do? We got a pet on the loose. You need to go get him. His name's Chris Stidler. Yeah, he's into little girls and he's grooming chicks and he's making them do unspeakable acts. Yeah, they're all, they're, they're, they're losers too. But I mean, you know, losers like losers and you know, it is what it is. He likes to call his followers babies. Does that seem like a man that likes to that gets off on having sex with consensual adults? I don't think so. I think the fantasy is he likes to get off on, on young, stupid women. That's what it is. The most loyal of whom were made elders in the fandom. Again, hello. Red flags. That's literally, he literally, this is literally what cults do. They call them elders. They have the cults. They have a fearful leader. They made art, crafted rule books, and got tattoos in honor of the pad podcast, including outlines of Delia's face. Oh, my gosh. And his life rips mantra. I'm sorry. That's on you, ladies. That's on you, ladies. I'm not going to blame Chris Delia because you're too stupid to realize that he's playing you. I'm not going to blame him. It, friends, if we're calling balls and strikes here, Chris D'Elia is is doing what a sociopathic, narcissistic, freak weirdo grooms women and girls and whatever. This is what he does. And honestly, there's not a lot of false advertising going on. He looks exactly what he is. He lo there's no surprises here. Um, let's see here. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, this is pretty good. Hold on. In early 2012. Oh, yeah. So here, this is good. Jill. This is Jill's story. Aspiring comedian Jill. Well, we can already tell she's not very funny. Aspiring comedian woman was new to LA in early 2012 when the then 19 year old began messaging with Delia on Twitter and in emails in late 2011, according to communications reviewed by Rolling Stone. Weeks later, she went to Delia's Sherman Oaks apartment. But when things began escalating, Jill says she told Dalia she wasn't interested in having sex because she was a virgin. I saw his eyes light up, she recalls. He was like, does that mean if I had sex with you, it would hurt you, right? Jill says the comment made her feel unsafe, so she quickly left. That was the day I learned that celebrities are not safe, she says of the 20-minute visit. Just because they're celebrities does not mean they're safe. Dalia did not respond. Wow. Well, Jill, Jill actually seemed to get it. I can't really blame Jill. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm doubting that she was a virgin moving to L.A. to be an aspiring comedian. Come on. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, this is funny. This is, man, this guy, this guy's got dirty game, I must say. Dirty game. You got dirty game, Crystalia, man. Listen to this, friends. 
despite their long distance relationship and primarily talking over Snapchat videos, Wolf to says Dalia told her he loved her within a matter of weeks, began calling her his girlfriend, and discussed Wolf moving to L.A. so they could be closer. Wolf felt similarly, although now she recognizes the rapid escalation of their relationship as love bombing. Oh, wow. Great job. Now she got it, friends. Jasmine Wolf finally figured it out. Wolf traveled to L.A. three times to see Dalia, but he only met up with her on two of those trips, so... Jasmine, I mean, look, we're trying to have your back here, but he told you he loved you in a matter of weeks, and you believe that? Okay. Did you see his face? This is Jasmine Wolf again. Look at the tattoos, the angel. I mean, this is someone who's had has some real problems, friends. We're not gonna make fun of her. She she tattooed CD for Crystalia on there. I mean, it is what it is. And friends. We're going to get through this, and I'm going to tell you my real opinion of this because it actually, if you pay attention, it, it, it tells you a lot about the, the fans of these horrible comedians. They're stupid. They have no discernment. They have no ability to tell what is good and right in the world. No wonder they're fans of Chris D'Elia and The Grifting Hour and all these other grifting, Tom Segura and Burt Kreischer. They have no discernment. They don't know what is good. They have no concept. They don't know God. How about, there I just said it. They have no concept of God. So they think Chris D'Elia is God. I'm sorry. If you see this face, that's not God. That's the farthest thing from God. And Chris D'Elia, honestly, Chris D'Elia would admit it. Chris D'Elia is not even pretending to be God to anyone. I mean, to anyone serious. Look at this guy. Even when he tries to be sorry. You know, I, uh, it's not okay. You see that, <laughs> you know, people talk a lot about the power dynamic and about, it's not, okay. uh, well, why should someone <laughs> who want, who is a fan of yours have to worry about if you want to sleep with them or not? And I don't, I don't know where I fall on that. You well, know, I, I sometimes think, <laughs> no, Especially in my early 30s, I would be like, well, the, the, the girl has the power because that's, you know, they, they I want to have sex with them. And, and if they want to have sex with me, then great. But what I can say is the familiar, the familiarity, I would use the fama, fama, familiarity. See that, how he's mixing up his words, friends? Who, did, who else did we catch doing that? Oh, yeah, Bobby Lee. When Bobby Lee was saying, oh, I didn't go down to TJ. Suddenly he was like. Uh, so what's the word? Uh, prereq prerequisite, pre 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 prerequisite. He can't even say familiar. Friends, I think we spotted when a liar is lying about something that's very central to who they are. They can't speak va basic words. Look at that. But familiar what familiar I can say is the familiar, the familiarity. <laughs> I would use the fam fam familiarity that that I had with these. Okay. With I can't take it much of this. Cause when I see this, I, if I saw me like, dude, stop lying, man. I know I, I can read, honestly, this is going to, I can read Chris D'Elia's soul. Okay. I can see everything about him friends just by looking at his face. When he talks, I would just say, dude, I know what you're doing. All right. I get it. You're not sorry. You're sorry. You got caught. You sorry. You got exposed. You're sorry that you were so lazy and reckless with how you did it. You're sorry. You got caught. But you're not sorry. You were out there saying, man, I'm going to this city. Hell yeah, I'm going to go on Instagram. I'm going to let them know I'm out there. And I'm going to say, you want to come to my show? And I'm going to try to set something up. I'm going to try to get laid every single night. Why, why? Just own it, dude. And you preyed on a lot of stupid women that ratted your ass out. That's your bad. You should have been a little bit more selective. He's not selective. Seems like he didn't even, he didn't even want to sleep with him. He was just getting blown, which, <laughs> I mean, really... At what point is it on the women? I'm sorry. At what point is it on the women? I'm talking about the ones who are of age. I'm not talking about he's grooming the other. At what point is it on them? This is the problem with all these hookup apps and the hookup culture. It's ruined women. I'll just say it. It's ruined women. Women are giving the milk away for free, and guys can spot it. They can spot it. These women are low value. I hate to say it. They're low value. They got only fans they got the ugly tattoos they're low value women with daddy issues and these freaking wolves her name's last name is wolf she got eaten by a wolf these wolves like crystalia prey on them crystalia knows exactly what he's getting into let me see what else we have here because i'm already getting bored of this and i want to wrap it up friends because i think we covered enough here what 30 minutes wow just flies by this is great when i asked her to delete stuff 
I like this right here. I don't ever want people feeling bad about themselves. You know that. This is how a sociopath talks women, just so you know. I don't ever want people feeling bad about themselves. You know that, don't you? Um, and then I love this. If you don't mind, deleting that stuff would definitely help me with people sending me death threats and shit. See how he plays the victim? This is, the, this is always a sign that you're dealing with a sociopathic narcissist, a Democrat, basically. They always are the victim. Even when they're the worst person, they'll be like, I'm getting death threats. Could you please uh, deal with it? Deal with it, Crystalia. Deal with your death threats. Why is it her fault? No, oh, please delete it because I'm getting a lot of death threats over here. I have a sexual addiction. I just wish he'd come out and say, look, here's the deal. I used to go around and I used to prey on the stupid women that would come to my comedy shows. See, my act is pretty stupid. And a lot of dumb women are into, you know, messy, crazy comedy and just, you know, no, no real jokes, just weird voices and, you know. And his act is not my cup of tea, I'll just say that. But a lot of dumb women like it. A lot of dumb, damaged women like it. And he should just be honest and say, I like to prey on women. I'm a sleazeball, scumbag, sociopath. I was born that way. I can't change it. It is, the, it is what it is. But I still got a hot wife. I'm still having kids. I'm still living the life. This satanic world rewards people like me. I wish he would just come out and say that. But really what this proves, friends, more than anything else, we're going to wrap it up here is it proves that the fans of these grifters, Griftalia, Eric Grifton, <laughs> Brendan Schaub, The Grifting Hour, congratulations, all these podcasts, all these grifters, at the end of the day, they're all a bunch of crappy human beings, if we're being honest. They're all a bunch of liars. And this is why Sean News exists, because we're calling them out. We're laughing at their downfall. We're calling balls and strikes. We're looking at Chris D'Elia. I mean... <laughs> We couldn't care less about Chris D'Elia. I mean, there, there's clearly a market for his horrible comedy, but I will say this, Chris D'Elia, we're watching you. We're watching you, and we're not going to make fun of the things that are easy for you to dismiss because this, this is not going to stick, friends. This isn't going to stick. What people need to see is that some people see right through Chris D'Elia. See, I won't consider these women victims necessarily, except for the underage ones. I think they're just stupid. I think they're gullible. And friends, this happens every single day. Chris D'Elia is not the first one to play this game with dumb women. When he sees a w women full of dumb tattoos, you know, you know, sending him sex picture pictures within 10 minutes, offering to give him a blow job for freaking, you know, for a ticket to his stupid show. Is he supposed to respect women? Is he really supposed to? I don't know what kind of relationship he has with his mother. He's taking advantage of dumb women. It is what it is. We'll call it for what it is. But it gives us a lot of insight into the average Chris D'Elia fan. The average fan of all these podcasts. They don't have discernment. They're stupid. They have, they're, into very, they're into very sick and disgusting human beings. And if we just look at Chris D'Elia's face, again, there's no false advertising going on with Chris D'Elia. You're getting exactly what you see. So, friends, we're going to wrap this up. I think it was one of our greatest episodes. Oh, my gosh. That guy is horrifying. That is a horrifying sight. Can you imagine wanting to take his pants off and suck on his peenie, friends? These women are, oh, yikes. Women are, really, every time I want to feel sorry for women, I, I think about what, what they'll do to get in this guy's pants so they can get a ticket to his horrible show. And I'm like, yep, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Whoa, next one, one with Brian Callen. Wow, that's a cute little couple right there. I bet they, I tell you right now, friends, I bet they were doing this game up and down all day long, and I bet Brendan Shaw was up in there too. I know it, friends. I know. I'm actually quite connected in the L.A. scene, friends. These guys have quite a reputation out there. I don't, I'm not going to divulge my sources at all. I'll just say, Everyone knows what was going on with these guys, okay? If you hung out on Sunset Boulevard, you know exactly how it goes down at these shows. They don't need to get all the girls. They just need a couple a night, and there are more than enough dummies that come to L.A. or that, you know, hear some guy said, oh, my God, so that guy, you know that Chris D'Elia guy from that Whitney show? So he's DMing me. Like, he's kind of cute. Like, I think I should go blah, blah, blah. <laughs> 
But friends, I hope you love this show. Chris D'Elia is a sicko. He's a perv. He's a sociopath. He's a narcissist. He shouldn't be trusted. And really, raise your daughters to be able to spot men like this. Raise your daughters to run away when they see freaks like this. Don't tell them, hey, yeah, go and get to know him. There's nothing to get to know. There's nothing to get to know. Those freaky eyebrows, that horrible hair, and that disgusting beard is a sign. It means run the hell away. Run the hell away and go in the other direction. Don't think that there's something there. There's nothing there for you that's good. His wife, friends, is miserable, okay? She, she, she won the prize getting married to Chris D'Elia. She's a laughing stock. Everyone knows he's cheating on his wife constantly, constantly. She has no respect for herself. I don't think she even cares about it. That's how these people roll. So raise your daughters, really, to run away from men like this. And uh, men, try to be better than Chris D'Elia. And if you can't get laid, turn into him. If you can't beat him, join him. If you dedicate your life to being a complete sleazeball, which I would not recommend, you will get laid. What I would say is don't be into that. Give your life to Jesus. Run away from the sin. Find some truth. Find some real things, and you can have a good life. It doesn't matter. Maybe you won't be married to a hot babe like Chris D'Elia. But remember, there's not a whole lot going on upstairs in that brain of hers. There's not much. That is a deeply damaged woman. There's a reason that Chris D'Elia is slanging his dick all over town. It's not just because, not because the girls are super hot. It's because his girl ain't exactly bringing him what he wants because he's a sociopathic, weird, and narcissist. So, friends, I hope you love the show. We'll see you on the other side.